Welcome to Wild Basin Wilderness Preserve. This preserve protects 227 acres of beautiful Texas Hill Country habitat, right here in Austin. It's part of the much larger Balcones Canyonlands Preserve, which covers about 50 square miles. Many rare and vulnerable species of animals and birds live here. That's why we protect the land. This is a great place to enjoy being outside and learn about the natural world. Ready to go exploring? I'm Amy Consilio. I'm a professor at St. Edward's University in Austin, and I'm an ecologist. An ecologist is a type of biologist, and we work outdoors in nature, and we look at how organisms interact with one another. My particular expertise is in plants, so I'm a plant ecologist. One of the the research projects that I'm working on right now at Wild Basin uh, has to do with invasive species. There are a lot of invasive plants that are planted as ornamentals in people's gardens because they're really beautiful. Um, and what happens is uh, a lot of these plants actually produce berries that are really yummy for birds. Um, so the birds come and eat the berries from the invasive plant and then they, um, which is maybe just right over here, and then they come over into the preserve and they sit on a branch and they poop and then we get the seeds um, from the invasive plants over into this part of the park. What we've observed is that there are more, there are a lot of invasive species that are coming into the park and we think that it might be because of the, um, you know, the ornamental plants that are being planted in the neighbor's yards. We came up with that hypothesis that um, closer to the preserve boundary, we would see more of these invasive species than in the interior. I got together with some of my students at St. Edwards that are in the Environmental Science and Policy Program, um, and I found f five really enthusiastic students who wanted to work on this research with me. Um, and we came up with a plan for the research, uh, and we came up with the methods and a way to test this hypothesis. Um, and then uh, we came out in the field, collected the data, um, and then analyzed it. Okay, so we actually use a lot of tools that you can buy at the hardware store for ecological research. This is just a simple tape measure, and I'm going to run it all the way from the edge of the boundary, and I, we normally go 50 meters into the park um, for our measurements. So I'm just going to show you a um, sample of kind of what, what we do. It's really important in, in science that you um, use methods that can be replicated. So uh, the way that we measure trees and we look at tree, um, the amount of trees that are in an area, we use something called fixed area plots. So plots of a specific size in a specific location. Um, and that makes it so that this is random, our, uh, the selection of our plots, um, and that somebody else can come along later and do the exact same study and find, hopefully find um, the same thing that I do. The center point is at 2.5 meters and everything within that circle, we're going to identify and we're gonna figure out how big it is. Um, so normally what I would do is put a stake in the center and then draw out a circle with um, flagging. Uh, to measure the trees, uh, I have this other kind of tape measure called a DBH tape, but this is a special tape measure that is calibrated so that when I put it around the tree, I actually get, it already does the calculation for me, and I just um, get the diameter. The DBH tape, like I said, the way it works, you just, um, <laughs> you just put the tape around the tree, and it is 3.5. Um, so I'd write that down, uh, and then again, we would do more plots like this all the way into the forest, all the way to 50 meters in, um, and collect data here, and then 10 meters in, and then 20 meters in, 30 meters in, 40 meters in, 50 meters in. This is one, this is called a transect. This is one transect. We have to do a lot of transects because there's so much variability out in nature. So um, 
we want to make sure that whatever pattern we see is the average of what's going on in general in this park. So we collected our data, brought it back to the lab, um, entered it into the computer, did a bunch of statistical analyses, uh, and what we found was that, in fact, there are more invasive species on the part of the park that borders the neighbors, the suburban neighborhood, than there are near the um, Vario Preserve, which is exactly what we hypothesized. Um, what we're looking at right here is actually one of our native trees, shrubs, yopon holly. Um, this is super important for birds and insects um, and provides really great services, ecosystem services. Um, and right below it, though, is uh, this is one of our exotic species that's invasive. We call it invasive because it, it actually outcompetes and crowds out um, natives. This is sad looking <laughs> Nandina, um, but it's planted uh, in people's ornamental gardens around Austin. Um, it's a really popular uh, species to plant in your yard. And it has escaped and gotten into wild places like this. And when it gets into the wild lands, um, we have to remove it because it's not something that provides any kind of food or resources for our native insects and birds. So let's see. Oh! <laughs> I think I need it. So there's a special tool uh, called a weed wrench that would make this much easier. <laughs> OK. So um, the reason that I care so much about invasive species and that the land managers here at Wild Basin are so concerned um, and really want to make sure that the habitat here is filled with natives is because native plants form the base of a huge food web. Um, so these native plants have co-evolved with insect herbivores, so insects that eat the plants and the plants produce compounds to fend off the insects, and then the insects figure out ways to get around those compounds. And through this, we've seen, we've, there, there's been a co-evolutionary race, arms race, between insects and plants. And those insects are really, really important for birds. Um, so even though birds also eat berries, they, a lot of birds, um, a big part of their diet, especially while they're raising their young, are these insects. This um, exotic plant that I'm holding, Nandina, or um, heavenly bamboo, it produces berries and you know, there's some insects that eat it and some birds that eat it. Uh, but compared to a native plant like this yopon, um, the Nandina isn't really supporting a lot of um, other organisms. Whereas this yopon, this native yopon, uh, is supporting hundreds of different insects and birds and so, so forth. Um, so that's why it's really so important that we plant native plants in our yards here in Central Texas um, and that the preserve is made up of mostly natives. Um, even exotics that don't uh, do anything detrimental to sort of crowd out uh, natives, they're not providing any, they're not providing the same services. Um, so that's why it's so important for us to, um, to work on these kinds of questions and figure out how we can reduce the amount of exotic species in Wild Basin. Um, so woohoo, we got rid of this invasive species uh, and now we're going to bring it out of the park so that it doesn't end up rerouting and um, spreading. So woohoo, one fewer invasive species. <laughs>